Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Skinny Dip Podcast. It's hi. I, oh. Hi, guys. I'm no, I'm going in. I'm sorry. Sometimes okay. I just think the intro when you like say it, I'm like so eager. I'm like, hi, hi, yeah. hi, hi, <laughs> hi, friends. Welcome back to the skin, the skin uh, of the dip. Oh, we should change our name. Gonna... Can you imagine our name was Skin? <laughs> the skin. The skin. Ah. It's actually not that's actually not terrible. Um, hope you guys are having a good week. Hope you're having a fantastic day, morning, night, whenever you're listening to this. Um I forgot what I was gonna say. Did you did were you gonna say something, Renee? I just kind of took over the conversation. No, I didn't. Um, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. This week we are diving into all things side hustle. But yes. before we dive into that, we're giving you guys our recommendations for the week. Yes, we don't want to forget them. I don't. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I'll start this time. Okay, hit me, baby girl. Um, I have I have it with me as well. <laughs> show and tell. I love show and tell. I know show okay. and tell is the best. So this is from Target. The brand is called Natrium. I've looked at like I've seen this. I don't know if you can that I Yeah, just, I can see it, but what is it? Natrium? Natrium, I believe okay. that's how you say it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a bunch of different products, but I was really looking for a lotion because one of my things that I'm trying to pick up in the back half of 2023 is to be moisturizing oh, my weight. Back what? half? I don't like that we I don't like that we're in the back half of 2023. We are. Oh god. All right, sorry, continue. That was anyway, very triggering. One of my things that I want to do is I want to make sure I'm moisturizing my body like every day. Because okay. you know, we moisturize our face, but Whatever. So I found myself a good moisturizer. It has a good pump. So it needs to be easy access. Mm-hmm, if you want to mm-hmm. start a habit, it needs to be easy. So yeah, it's really <laughs> thick. Can you see it? It just feels- Oh, wow. It's giving glue. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. It feels like th- like it's like really thick, but it's actually not that – I don't know. It like goes on really smooth. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a, I'm doing yeah, a full show Yeah, she's doing a tutorial. And Some people may be turned on by this, just so you know. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really nice and it's fragrance free. So literally no fragrance. And it just That's interesting. Like, t- truly, yeah, I don't want a fragrance. When I, I put it on before I go to bed and I put it on like literally from neck to toe. Mm-hmm. And when I wake up in the morning, like you could just feel you feel really no- moisturized. So anyway, it's the Natrium Biolipid Restoring Body Lotion. And we can find that at Target. You can for I think it's a whopping was it twelve dollars? Hold on, I wrote it down. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Fourteen fluid ounces. So I mean, it's it's not bad, but you no, know. I don't. It doesn't sound bad. I never really calculate how much that is per ounce. You know how people are always like bargain hunting and they're they're comparing mm-hmm. the ounce per total price. It's, it's not really for me. So it, I, it sounds yeah, great. I feel like a lot goes. Oh, sorry. A little goes a long way with this product. So mm. if I just do like a little, a little pump, it can do like, I just need like two pumps for my entire body. So okay, it's, it's ten out of ten. Love that. Thank you. My wait, hold on. I want to get it. I'm, oh God, I love show and tell. I'm so I'm so glad we started show and tell. It's literally my favorite thing ever. So my recommendation is, hold on. I want to do it with the people. Do it. Oh, I was about to. I was yeah. actually gonna. I wanted that one to be one of my recommendations. Oh, ASMR. You know how people – is that yeah. what that is? Okay. Yeah. So mine is the Glow Recipe. Yeah. AHA Nighttime Treatment. Mm-hmm. The, I got the little guy to start off with. Empty. Thing is bone dry and I'm still sticking my finger in there because my next shipment isn't, isn't here yet. <laughs> really, really great to lube up your face at night. It is a little watery. So yeah, you yeah, got it. it yeah, it's this is not a thick. This isn't a jelly, Mm-mm. folks. This is not a jelly. This is a a watered down smoothie. You know, you got to like kind of put your finger in it and like put your face back so it just like drips onto your face. But I will say, I feel like every morning, the next morning after I put it on, my face feels really hydrated and my skin. I just reference I have like sensitive dry skin and this really does work for me. Um. Because I'm really trying to look like a glazed donut when I go to bed. So I would definitely recommend this. I think the smaller guy, which is 25 ml, whatever the heck that means, is around 20 something dollars. And then the 60 ml is $40, which is a little pricey. But I will say, I think I got this sample little guy back in May. 
and it's now September. So it lasts a while because I think it's so it's watery. So it you don't yeah. you only get your finger really. It's like really good, and it's it spreads on really. Yeah, it does. I started using I started using it because you recommend like recommended it to me, and I I've I've really been enjoying it. My only thing is I wish they put it in a different. It should be in a pump. I think would be better. A pump, or they can give you like a scooper, something. Yeah, just a spatula, it, something. It's a little messy. It is a little messy. Um, yeah, you really got to get in there for the claws. But I would definitely recommend it if you guys are in the market. I don't know. I've really been loving. Did you say? Stuff. Did you say what it was? You just said it's the. What's the? It's the watermelon glow A H A nighttime night treatment. Yes. Okay. And then the underneath. Oh my god, this is really straining my eyes. Glowing radiance and smoothing. I really love it. I have to say, I've been really on a kick, and she's empty, so I will be refilling her once my order comes in. Amazing. That's my recommendation for this week. Very well. Thank you. Are we ready? Are we ready we to help our people? Yeah, let's dive right into our our, okay. pl- our to our topic. We are discussing, like I said before, all things side hustle, all things side hustle. I don't mean to be a negative Ned, but let's call it for what it is. Okay. The economy blows, bud. Okay, it blows. We're 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 in a terrible. We, no one can afford anything, and no, I feel like it's really bad. It's terrible. <laughs> Renee and I were just having this conversation privately. It's bad. Like I went. <laughs> like I just really oh. feel like for some reason, like I truly feel like it's the groceries. Oh my god! It's like uh, the yeah. groceries and the common goods that are truly <laughs> killing me. It's so terrible in the fact that I feel like everyone now, whether you're a two person, two income household or one person, you everyone I think at some point in time is like, okay, I need a side hustle. I need something else to supplement this money because if you're like Renee and I, your salary, we're salary employees. Sorry, I didn't mean to just disclose your salary to agency, but I'm doing it as well. We're salaried people. So we only make the same amount every single month. Mm-hmm. And if you're an hourly, I think you have a little bit more flexibility. You can probably pick up more shifts, whatever the case may be. It's a rough go, friends. It is a rough, rough go. I feel like I can only speak for myself. It's hard to get ahead. It's impossible to pay off, you know, debts or anything that you have. And it also feels a little bit impossible to enjoy your life and spend the money you want to spend. I was telling Renee. Literally preach it. I was preach telling it. Renee. I was like, I I want to buy a condo and then eventually rent it out when I have a house. But I'm like, mom is going to need a few more side hustles to really afford this condo. No, it's so, it's so, hard. so hard. It's yeah. hard. And I hope if anyone, anyone who's listening who may be feeling the same stress or feeling – overwhelmed or confused like we are right there with you because 100 even though renee and i have different income situations you know renee is a household of two i'm a household of one single high lady liberty here it is hard it is so hard and we live in two different states and we have two different situations and, and we are still both straight struggle for us but straight struggle so we're going to help you guys kind of navigate this, I want to say culture of side hustle. Do you think it's becoming a culture? Because I think it's a culture. I would say it's definitely, there's there's things that are like gaining momentum. I kind of look at it in two different, and I know we we're going to dive into it a little bit, where it's like you could be starting a side hustle because it's something you're really passionate in, or you're just trying to grab some extra cash. So there's two That's different. huge. Yeah. That's huge because – sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no. I think that's actually the great place to start. Okay. Because I feel like when you're thinking about side hustle, you have to be realistic with what you think your immediate goals are. Because what Renee said, there's two avenues, right? You can either follow your passion or you need another 100 bucks. Like you need that tomorrow. Yeah. So I think the first most important part of identifying your side hustle is figuring out, one, what your immediate goal is, but also, two, your long term. Because yep. if you're looking to chase your passion, might not be some money in that right away. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> not going to lie to you. Because Renee is still trying to chase her. Um, Renee, what are you still trying to chase? I always am trying to do some sort of creative I, I, something. I think about something every day that I'm like, oh, I could do that. I could do this. Where 
it would be something or it's like not even it's it's like a mixing of it two where you're like okay this is something i'm passionate about and maybe in the future i can make some money doing it it's mm-hmm. a bonus mm-hmm. <sighs> It's not easy though. It's not easy. And I I don't want to sit here and sugarcoat, obviously me being me, but I don't want to, we don't want to sugarcoat saying if you follow your passion, you're going to be making money right away. I think, (laughs) I don't want to tell you this, Uh, but I don't think you're going to be. No. I don't think you're going to be. And if you do, that's amazing. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot, a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to follow your passion. And if that's something you like, if you're looking to start a side hustle Mm -hmm. and you're saying, okay, I want to follow my passion, but I also need to make money on the side. Realistically, you're probably going to be doing two different side hustles in addition to what you're doing now. Yep. Yep. So you'll have that side hustle that's like guaranteed cash Mm -hmm. doing surveys online. I'm not even going to try to lie to you. I did. I tried to do that years ago and I epically failed. It's not – I would say that's it's not, not – Actually, I would not say that's – I would not suggest that one. It's not, it's not very <laughs> lucrative. But, you know, selling things on OfferUp, I've been mm-hmm. doing that. Like things that you know that you're going to – it's guaranteed – Instant cash. Instant cash coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, Or trying to work on a project that you have a lot of passion in. And to be honest, like money is not always the first – is the first reason why you're doing it. There Agreed. there's uh could be 10 other reasons why you want to start this this kind of side hustle or passion project. But so anyway, I think we kind of we kind of went no, I mean, I think it's important to recognize cuz I, I I one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see people say this side hustle, this side hustle, this side hustle. And then I think there's a false narrative around the types of side hustles and then the money that if you need deriv- like derives from that. You know what I mean? Like you can definitely follow your passion and do something you love. I think you just need to be realistic in it because I think that's where a lot of people fail is that they'll try to do a side hustle and maybe they don't know their why enough or their immediate goal enough. And then when they yep. try to do it and they fail, they get disappointed and they don't do it again. Yep. No, I agree. I think it, for the sake of this conversation, we'll probably more so be focusing on a passionate side hustle mm-hmm. just because that's something that you and I have – experience in whereas you know those kind of quick grab money side hustles that you could do i mean we have examples of some of them if you are in a situation where you just need to get some extra money um you know those are those are out there but it's not necessarily the side hustle that we're diving into correct i would say i think it's more so kind of that long-term side hustle that you're starting that if it like the dream is to have it to become not just the side hustle, to become mm-hmm. the the main thing, like mm-hmm. your your bread and butter, your thing that you want to start and that you're really working towards. You know what I mean? So, so that's kind of our our chat, our chat today. I think one of the also the starting the biggest starting things when you're thinking about starting a side hustle is. How do I say this? That makes sense. It's almost knowing yourself, right? Because mm-hmm. if you want to start a side hustle or if you want to start a – I'm going to say pro- passion project. If you want to start a passion project, I think you need to really be rooted in what you enjoy t- doing and know yourself. Because I got to be honest, if someone said to me – um, like if I was thinking about starting a passion project, but I – like in dancing – right? For some reason, just say, I think I'm a great dancer and I think I can open a dance studio, but like everyone else is probably like, oh, you probably can't open a dance. Like, I think it's like important to know, be realistic in what you want to do because you can have passions, but like kind of what Renee said, um, in a few episodes ago, you can have passion in something, but it doesn't maybe necessarily mean that it's going to be worth your while to invest your time in that specific thing. Cause people can have a lot of different passions. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it doesn't always it it doesn't mean because of something that you're passionate in, you want to make it your career, you Agreed. know, or something that you're gonna there's definitely a difference in that. And because sometimes, you know, you hear it sometimes where people try to do something that they really love and it's like a hobby of theirs and they're gonna make it their life's work and then they end up not having that same feeling about it anymore once it becomes work. Yeah. So yeah, it can be it can be really tricky. Um and it's it's definitely a long uphill yeah. battle when it's something that you're starting from zero and going to 
try to grow into something that, you know, you're not going to put any cap on it, like let it grow into whatever it's going to grow into. But it's, it's difficult. And we're talking so hard. We're talking from experience here. Guys, it's so hard. It's so So hard. (laughs) I'm not really (laughs) just honestly, we're just having an, uh, we're going to be having an honest conversation on what it's like to, I mean, you're deciding that you're going to start this quote unquote side hustle, but I mean, we don't have the the five steps to get Mm-mm. to get you know rich quick, or the Mm-mm. five things to make your side hustle become your full career, and you've got a full business. Like we don't have that. That I no. don't. I can't. I can't <laughs> tell you that. I wish I could. You know, and I listen to like so many different you know podcasts or stories about certain people that have started from the ground up. Nick Bear, for instance, started BPN. Um, nutrition from the ground up in his college dorm room Mm -hmm. the ceo of mush have you ever seen mush those yeah um the oatmeal things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she started that from the ground up the um ceo of it cosmetics she used to be a waitress at denny's and just created a makeup company there's these stories that you hear that they have this idea this spark this interest this passion and then they bring it to a level of success and like, yeah, a level of success that you just can't even imagine it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that does not happen overnight. And when you no. listen to these stories about people starting something from zero to taking it to extraordinary levels, it is the amount of failures that they have in between that journey, the amount of, you know, Tribula- tribulation tribulations and like successes like so many things that happen throughout that story and it takes them a years. like 10 years like crazy amount of time and you only see it once it's done agreed you don't see the zero to one the one to two the two to three you, you're not seeing that kind of slow progression you're seeing it at the pinnacle of its success mm-hmm. which i think can be super misleading it's almost it, it, it's so inspiring but at the same time it could almost be discouraging in the same way because you're like oh wow like I would love to have my passion become so successful and to be you know work towards something and have it become like all of my wildest dreams but mm-hmm. at the same time like it is just so hard to even visualize that and there's no roadmap right so oh, actually no. I, um, years ago, well, yeah, I guess years ago. Well, I still do it, but whatever. I like to go on walks, blah, blah, blah. There's a podcast called How I Built This. And oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard if that. You, if you listen to it, it's literally all these stories about these these businesses that people have started. And it's so interesting because when Renee was saying you're only seeing, you know, when it's really, really great, when you're listening to an episode, you're listening to someone else speak about their experiences with their passion project side hustle, you're hearing a condensed version in an hour. You're hearing a condensed version in 40 minutes. You're hearing the highs and the lows in 40 minutes. Like Renee said, it takes years and there is no roadmap. Mm -mm. From firsthand experience, Renee and I, there is zero roadmap. Guys, there's no roadmap. There's Google, which is a lot more than people had years ago. Yeah, we do have a lot of resources, but it's... I don't want to – can I say interject it, for say a second? It. Yeah. I think also what I struggle with sometimes too is even having the idea to start something. Like, you know, we started this podcast, right? Like this has been a huge passion project for you and I. Mm-hmm. But even on top of that, it's like, okay, but what else can – like. What, you, you sometimes I think there's you just maybe have that entrepreneurship like mindset where you just kind of like think about these ideas and you're like what kind of problems can I solve or whatever because that's what a lot of these entrepreneurs do is they have a problem in their life and they figure out a product or a solution or a service to fix that problem and I definitely think sometimes I think a lot about I'm like okay like what in my life do like just even the uh, the thought the idea the step one the step zero to yeah. get you to that true like the the project that you want to start and I I haven't had that I mean the podcast yes like that's something that I 
you know, I was, I felt very called to it. It was something that I wanted to do. And I, we joined forces, forces together and we've been doing it. Um, and I'm really proud of that. And this is a huge passion project for you and I, mm -hmm. but I think there's also just that whole other thought of like wanting step zero and like something I would love is like you and I to like, I, I think we have the, you and I have the drive and the mindset and the power to have that at some point and think about something like I would love to just have our own business, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's something that comes with its own set of challenges, challenges, hurdles. I think it's, that's so true too. And I think a lot of times people get turned off by their, um, desire to do something outside of what you know quote unquote the slave life is right because renee and i talk about this a lot honestly independently is we're a slave to someone else's name you're a slave to someone else's name and i also hate i, I personally personally if i am going to invest a lot of time and a lot of money outside of the job that pays me I want it to be my name. I want it to be our name. I have nothing against. Is it MLMs? Is that technically the technically the word like Monet those, or like those like like those big... give me mm -mm. so pyramid schemes? Pyramid schemes. <laughs> there, if you are doing a, I, oh, I hate the word. Fine, Please pyramid don't, schemes. Don't do a pyramid scheme. Are you gonna okay? Ask? Well, no, 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 no. What I was gonna say is, if you're interested in doing a pyramid scheme and that's what you think works best for you that is your prerogative right that is your you ride that tricycle sister mister and you do your thing are they illegal i'm pretty sure pure i don't like i don't know if they're illegal but my point to that is and i also think there's a very big misunderstanding is when you have an when you're joining an L mlm <laughs> i didn't know we were <laughs> uh, if you're joining an L mlm or whatever the whatever the heck the acronym is i don't know i'm not an acronym person i make up my own words even though you see people having this high level of success, you're at the bottom and you're still starting and putting all this work into something that's not your name. And for me personally, I can never get behind. I, it, for me personally, if you were my friend and you said you want to do this, I would say no. Yeah. Do something in your name because you're going to be stressed out at 9 p.m. trying to get it out you're going to be really overwhelmed you're probably going to cry you're going to be in the red you're going to feel discouraged you're going to question why you're doing it at least do that with your name on it at least that is your baby put your name on that hard work that you've done that's like and, my biggest thing i think yeah and have it be something that you truly at the end of the day feel passionate about and that's mm -hmm. what I think is the hardest thing is finding out, okay, what is it that I'm passionate about? What is it that I'm going to feel at the end of the day? Like I will be proud of the work that I'm doing because it's something that I truly feel. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that I truly enjoy or I truly love or I truly find the meaning in it. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't have that, you it's, do. not, it's not going to work. <laughs> It's yeah. not going to work. It's no, not it going to work because there's so many things that go that are going to come into the way that's just going to kind of knock you down time and time again. And if you don't have that internal passion or drive or meaning behind what you're working in, you're not going to want to get back up. I Agreed. just know it for sure. Agreed. And um, that's something that's so important. So before you even get started and thinking about, okay, what do I want to get what do I want to get into? Like, if you have that kind of feeling of that drive and like, for me personally, like, I'm like, I don't really want to do the nine to five my whole life. That's mm -hmm. not personally, I don't want that. So that's already the drive in me to kind of have that thought and okay, what's my step zero? What, what do I want to start? Yeah. And that doesn't come to you right away either. I still don't know what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still searching for something that I'm like, okay, like, that's what I want to start. That's what I want to get into. Um, you know, the podcast, obviously, that's something that we started and we're doing. But I think yeah. there's still – there's there can always be something bigger. You know what Agreed. I mean? And I think also, not to interject, but 
when you're unsure about what your passion is or, you know, you're, you're looking to start something and you're like, wait, what am I, what do I even do? You know, cause like for me, I'm like, what do I even do? What, what, what do we do? Like, I have no idea. When you do like take a step back, uh, this sounds really dumb, but take a step back and write down every single thing you do in a day and do that for like a week or so. And you will see habits you didn't know you had that someone else probably has. If you're spending every day clipping those coupons, you're you're clipping coupons every day because you are really looking to save a dollar. You don't know who else is doing that. You don't know what value you bring. And yeah. don't underestimate social media in its form now because you could literally just start up an Instagram page of solely your tips on what you do and you do that at, you know because you're already doing it you do it ornately you do it organically you're already doing it you're sharing it with the world and you have no idea where that's going to lead you yeah. and so I, I don't think anyone should ever be doubting how quote-unquote small a passion is or how minute something you're doing is because you don't know there are probably millions of people who are doing that who would who would do the same thing you're doing I think it brings into a lot of and I've been kind of looking into this a little bit too and it, it goes a little bit off topic but I don't think I don't, totally. I don't think it does I think hammered on in imposter syndrome mm. where you're starting something and you feel like an imposter because I, I mean I felt like that with the podcast yeah like I still feel like it like yeah you know what I mean where you kind of are doing something where it's like well we're not let's say for what it is like we don't have thousands of people listening to our podcast mm -hmm. every week like we are still in the zero to one phase mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of i mean and i from what i was i was just kind of like listening to something about it and it's like you're not an imposter when you say that you're a beginner at something when you own to being on the journey and not trying to pretend to be call her daddy you know mm -hmm. what I mean like we're mm -hmm. not out here being like oh we have this number one lifestyle podcast like that's the dream but we're still in zero to one and you don't yeah. see that all the time mm -mm. and I think it takes a lot of kind of self ownership to be like you know what like no like we're beginners, we're learning, we're doing this, we're showing up. And it's kind of, it does make you feel a little bit like, you know, an imposter where you're like, like, I'm not what, like, who, like, who do I think I am? But not trying to start something. That's, that's the true failure. Like, Agreed. think about if, you know, you've thought about starting your own, you're, you're an artist, you make you're really great at watercolors and you're like, oh, it'd be amazing for me to just take these and sell them as prints. And you would love to do that. And you just never did it. That's the failure of not Agreed. doing it. You know what I mean? And there's so many different ways that you can kind of like think about the stuff in your life where you're like, wow, like I don't want to look back and be like, oh my God, I could have, I could have, I could have done this. Mm -hmm. I've been reading David Goggins book. Do you know David Goggins? No. Um, I can't even, he's, I, I I don't even know the word to explain this man. Truly a person who lives to his fullest potential every single day and doesn't leave anything on the table. And his biggest fear is he doesn't want to, at the day of his, you know, his death, be shown what your life could have been. Like get get like being handed okay like this is who you are and then giving getting the paper from God or whoever it is you believe, and you see like wow wrote a book did this did that, um one of the most motivation his books was sold like millions of copies could you imagine that if he didn't live up to his fullest potential every single day he would have been given that paper, and saw. You know, and that we don't know that that's really what's going to happen. But could you imagine that thought of being like, wow, like I, I capped myself at so many possibilities that I could have, I've, I've, that could have happened or I could have worked towards. Um, and that's like his biggest thing that he's like, I don't ever want to cap my potential. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think a lot of people do that too. I think you do. And I think unintentionally, you kind of, unintentionally, you get comfortable. You mm -hmm. don't want to, I mean, we're, 
a lot of us are risk averse because our brain doesn't want us to make risks because it wants to keep us alive. It wants to keep us safe. So taking these risks and doing these things are literally, they're unnatural to our, to our makeup. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we don't want to do that because we don't want to get ourselves into dangerous situations or situations that could be harmful to us. But, um, like not taking those risks sometimes could be the biggest mistake. So hundred percent agree. There was a, um, a conference I went to years ago. Um, it was a 10 X conference with Grant Cardone. Did you really? Wow. I yeah. would love to go to a 10 X. Yeah. I went to a 10 X conference. It was actually in Miami. Where was it? Really? Miami. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it was at the stadium. Oh, I can see that from my, yeah, I think it was, it was there. Um, we went to this 10X concert, uh, concert. It was not a concert. It was a conference. And it was, I think, two or three days. And it was just straight stories of so many people. There was Grant Cardone was there. Bethany Frankel was there. Um, Sarah Blakely's, the owner of Spanx's husband was there. There were wow. so many yeah. people there that all said the same thing, right? They said – you have when you're looking at your life and you're looking at how to 10x your life and how to how to enhance your life it's it's not just and i think this is a very big misunderstanding i think this is where people get confused about when they see people on instagram or they see all these things and it's like oh my god these people have this crazy intense life with quote unquote all this cash flow or whatever the case may be it's not just one stream right they don't have one stream it's not just your 9 to 5 it's your 9 to 5 plus your passion project that's going to hypothetically pay off your debt plus your your extra job you're working 9 p.m to midnight to add to your saving it's all these strings of income or projects that 10x your life and like renee said it's hard to get there because you have this fear of doing it mm -hmm. and there's this false narrative around it's so easy it's so easy it's not easy it takes a lot of time, a lot of time. It takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes money. If you're starting a passion project, if you're starting something on the side, it takes money. You have to invest in yourself to do that. Yeah. And it's very easy to get discouraged when you have to go through those type of hurdles to get where you want to get. But if you want to 10X your life and step outside your comfort zone – you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And I also think a biggest thing is, is like Renee mentioned, being humble about it, mm -hmm. being humble and yeah. knowing that beginning phases, literally even like at the conference, they were like beginning phases is, could be like five years. You don't yeah. know what your growth or your end goal is going to be because no one can predict the future, but mm -hmm. don't get discouraged if you're not you know, Grant Cardone in three weeks. Like that's just not how that happens. And I think the biggest thing is just a reality check. And I hate to say that when we're trying to um, bring positivity and real realistic nature to, you know, the side hustle culture, the side hustle idea. But let's, I think the biggest thing is also just owning where you are in it and, and let's not sugarcoat it. Cause I think you'll get discouraged if you, re if you honestly do. Yeah, no, I know it's, and it, you have to know that, you know, sometimes there's like all these things that we say to ourselves before starting where it's like, oh, well, I'm starting too late, or maybe it's already been done before or this and that, but don't set up so many parameters yourself for yourself before you actually get started. Cause even when we started the podcast, like Podcasts are becoming – they're coming out left and right. There's so yeah. many people doing podcasts. We're not doing anything that's, you know, quote-unquote new or, you know, something that's never been done before. But you can't have that be a reason to stop yourself from, like, joining the table. Like, there's Agreed. always room for you and what makes – your thought, your, your passion, your um, invention, whatever it is that you want to pursue, whatever that is, like, it's going to be unique because there's only one person in the world that's you doing it. So you have to like lean into that and like let your uniqueness speak for it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Um, which can be super – it's also very vulnerable and hard too. But 100%. I think even if you're starting it by yourself, right? Okay, so we'll use podcasts as an example. Obviously, it's Renee and I, right? Mm-hmm. Two, two little amigos. Here we are. If you're by yourself or you're with someone else doing something, there are a set of challenges for each. It's almost like every single thing you think about when you're thinking about a passion project, a side hustle, whatever, there's like in the main point and then under the main point, it's like 10 different avenues because if you're doing it by yourself, it's solely you. You're running you. You're motivating you. You're doing everything. And if you have someone else, like let's call for what it is, you have someone else things are split, but there are so many other challenges because it's not just Renee. It's not just me. It's us coming together to agree on what we want to do for this podcast, which is a whole separate set of challenges. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy to think about because I think about it. I know you, you've talked a lot about it too. It's like, if you want to do something on your own, it's you're motivating you. But if you want to do it and you're joining forces with someone, it's like, you're motivating each other, but it's also, it's a 50-50 split. So I guess my point in saying that is there's always challenges with whatever route you go. And I think the, the again, it's really just more so being aware of it and owning it. Yeah. Really. And, and, and know that most likely when you start something or you're working really hard, you're probably going to want to quit at some point. You're going to yeah. feel super discouraged in some moments and you're going to consider quitting and that's just part of it and you know obviously that's up to you and deciding if you know you want to if if it's truly at the point where you're it's not serving you anymore um you'll know and you'll kind of just have to listen to that gut instinct that it's it's no longer for you but know that there's going to be times when you're going to feel so discouraged, so tired, um, you know, not not interested or just so many different feelings and that you're going to you're just not going to want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take a lot of you're going to probably have a lot of like, you know, resurgences of energy after you kind of are like, you know what? No, like I. I want to keep going. I don't want to quit. And it's almost that feeling of like almost really close to to taking that step of quitting where you're like, oh, no, that's – you kind of see it. You see, oh, well, what would happen if I, if I stopped, you know? Like what am I leaving on the table? What am I not – and again, it's that given the paper when you like reach your – last day and it's like oh this is what could this is what your life could have been like this is what you could have had but you stopped you know and I don't Mm -hmm. want that like I don't want that for myself and I don't think you want it either so really think about you know when you're starting something know that it's going to be a natural feeling on not wanting to do it anymore but listen to your gut and your intuition on you know okay I feel this way and that's it's okay that I feel this way right now, but I'm going to keep going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's also crazy because I think it's something that you and I um, recently have dabbled in, not, nece- not the quitting aspect, but more so when you're thinking about quitting, if you're thinking about quitting, have you done everything to yeah. try? Because I've got to be honest, if – you got to shift. You got to change. Sometimes you think you're going to start off with the color blue and you end up with color orange. And like, that is just what happens. You can't, there's no way you can project the future and there's no way you can say for sure, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And this is going to get me where I want to get. Sometimes it's going to be X, A, five, seven, three, and then you're going to go to Z. You know what I mean? There's, there's just always a reroute. And so always trust, like Renee said, your gut and always trust that you've done everything you can do. Yeah. You don't want to – and and you'll know too. Like mm-hmm. I, You're like, okay, like I haven't been doing everything that I can. And you said it, you said it before in the beginning. Like it takes a lot of sacrifice. And if it's something that you really want and you want to work towards it and you want to continue it, you're going to have to be like, okay, like I need to sacrifice. I need to wake up a little bit earlier. I need to get up at – you know, whatever time it is and allocate an hour, look at your calendar every week. And if you're not allocating time for that side hustle or for that passion project 
or for whatever it is, it's not going to happen. You have to allocate time to get it done because Mm -hmm. it's not going to just, you know, unless you're doing drop shipping and you're making money while you sleep. I don't know how you figure out that. If you figured out drop (laughs) drop shipping, let us know. Um, But seriously, like if, if you don't really put in the time, put in the energy to work on that, it's not going to happen. If you're Mm -mm. just kind of half-assing it for better, you know, for better, lack for better words, then you're going to get a half-ass result. You need to put in the full work to be able to do it. And let me just say, that's not easy when you're dealing with a a full-time job on top of it, because I'm sure you are, because you're not going to be making money from this passion project. Again, we're not talking about, I mean, there's so many side hustles that if you want to get into Uber Eats, dog walking, um, dr- drop shipping, selling goods on Etsy, like there are certain things that you could do that are going to maybe make you a little extra buck here or there. But this is taking a little bit of a different route with the side hustle and working in like working towards something that maybe will be bigger in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like this is a, this is a decade of work that you're going to set yourself up for decade plus, you know, all of these companies that you look into that started from zero to got to a certain level, you know, it's taken a really long time for them to get to where they are. Like we said before. So You've got to know that if you want that, it's not going to come overnight. It's not going to come overnight, certainly if you're putting 20 minutes of work into it every day. It's mm-hmm. it's not. It's, it's not, not going to. So I almost wish, and this is so cheesy to say, and I wish we did this. I don't think we would have wanted to do it in the moment, but I wish every single day you and I like took a selfie video and said what our exact feeling or what we were doing on the podcast that day. Cause if we collaged it together, you guys would see this huge wave. Of, we should have done that. We I mean, should have, maybe we should start doing we that. And start, like start doing back it now to you. Because it's, yeah. it, it's not, I think to see an inside look of people just, we're just trying to, you know, we're like figuring it out and it's mm-hmm. really, Like, I would love to see the process, like the actual, it's one thing to hear about this super successful entrepreneur talk about their story from when they went from zero to 10, but it's also totally different to see it in the process. Yeah. Um, Because you just don't see that very often. It and you can, you can appreciate their story and you can imagine it, but it's just different to see it at the ground level yeah and it still be at the ground level you know yeah I will say it is really inspiring to watch something grow from nothing to a big thing it is it is that type of experience that you don't really realize how impactful it makes on your life until you experience it and you know I guess today Renee and I are just giving you guys big sister true reality advice because it's yeah. almost I wish we listened to something like this when we like last year yeah think about where we were last year at this time yeah like I, mean, I wish we heard something like this because I don't want anyone to ever feel like you feel dumb for starting something you feel dumb for re-strategizing you feel dumb for not doing it like never feel like what you're doing isn't enough unless it really isn't and you'll know the difference because we're all in that same position with you guys and we we honestly it's so hard life is so hard sometimes and like we said in the beginning this economy ain't helping okay it's Mm -mm. not helping and it's hard when you're stressed about bills and it's hard when you're stressed about your full-time job the thought of thought starting something else coordinating schedules sacrificing time to do it it's not easy but i really do feel like you come out a better person of it and like renee said it's like when you look at that paper you're like okay yeah here i am like this is this is what i did and it's funny because a lot of times you know when i see maybe friends i haven't seen in a while or family members they're like oh how's the podcast you know, how's everything going? I'm like, oh, it's great. I was like, but it's a full-time job. You know, I always say it. I'm always like, I love it. But like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And anything you love and you put passion into, there's so many different emotions. But like, we're here cheering for you guys. We're here cheering for you because 
we're living it. We know we know how hard it could be. And we are your cheerleaders because respectfully, and I mean this in no shame to myself or Renee. It's okay. But if we <laughs> can figure this out, guys, <laughs> you can too. Like if we could figure out a way <laughs> to make our passion just a community uh, like we've made our community you guys can too you guys can too i mean if a crime ho and, and a meditation babe can figure out how to blend worlds and create an amazing community mm-hmm. like anyone can do it let's should we list i know you listed off some things i know we talked oh. a lot about passion projects renee listed a few things I'm going to spitfire a few a few quick things if you guys need extra cash too because we don't want to leave out anyone who isn't really wanting to start a passion project. If you want to start making some extra money on the side, there are some great things you can do and we're going to list them rapid fire. So Renee mentioned Rover. What else did you mention? You mentioned Rover. Oh, dog walking, babysitting. You mentioned take babysitting. Up, you can take up that. Um, there's – Uber Eats. I would do Uber Eats over um Ubering. Like actually Uber. <laughs> yeah, I actually probably would do that too. I'm not going to lie. That seems a lot less stressful for me. Um if you have any goods that you want to sell on Etsy um or printable downloads was something that I was looking into as well. I just do so much work on the computer and graphic work that I just can't I I just bought a printable download from Etsy. Don't have the patience for it. The printable, the the downloadables on Etsy, if you have any the, – the thing is it's tricky with that, though, is don't go on Canva. You can't go on Canva and take the templates that they already make and then sell them on Etsy. Like, right. that's that's plagiarizing. You need to make like, – <laughs> you need to actually – I didn't know that. That's good to know. I didn't know that. You need to make, like, true templates. I just okay. – know because I've seen people – like, I, I used to get on TikTok a lot because it my, my TikTok, like, knew that I wanted to do that. So it was, like, showing me and, like, people were – just taking templates from Canva. And I'm like, you can't do that. That's right. plagiarizing. Right. Okay. And you That's can't even enough. just change the font and then sell it. That's still it's it it you have to make your own like your own template. Template. Okay. That's good um, to know. Which at least for me, it's not that fun, you know? So no, sometimes it's not fun. But I just didn't have the passion for it. Like Agreed. you know, when you yeah. start something, if you're not like feeling that kind of fire under your ass, mm. it's not it. You've no. got to like kind of have that butterfly feeling. You get excited to do it. Like when we mm-hmm. first start, I mean, I'm still obviously excited about the podcast. We love She's doing revealing it. information I didn't know. <laughs> but when we first started, like we had fire under our ass. Like we were excited. Like we were doing the steps to get it to to start rolling, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so if you don't feel that, it's not going to be it. But these are yeah. – these are we're, we're yeah we're yeah. kind of talking about like quick buck stuff yeah. um so if you have i mean i'm just saying i'm just putting out a disclaimer that if you want to make a quick buck on etsy and doing printable downloads just make sure you're not plagiarizing yeah that's good to know i didn't know your, that you could get yourself into a tricky situation yeah we don't want to get you guys sued don't get take renee's advice so we don't want to get sued um waitressing you could pick up a shift waitressing i've never waitressed in my life but if i always strapped on cash i would definitely do that being Only a lifeguard fans. actually only fans <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm that's something that's tickling your fancy. No, 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 no. No, I worry about that. I worry about that. I think that could end up being somebody. Uh, uh, I don't know. Right, right. Mm. Um, I should have brought it up. <laughs> I had another I had another one. Lifeguarding. Oh, there's also a lot of um, buzz around. If you're a beauty person, and I say if you're a beauty person, you don't have to be a beauty person. But again, if you're not a beauty person, trying to be a reviewer for Sephora probably isn't your jam. But I've seen a lot of things about like uh, can an you affiliate make money? link. Yeah, I think oh, you can. Oh, affiliate links. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Something where it's like you review Sephora products. You could do that. Um, if you're a teacher and you have some type of – I don't know if you need a degree, but sometimes you do. You can like I think edit or tutor kids online or something like that. Like that's probably an easy way to make – Yeah, freelance work. If you think about like if you if you're in a trade or anything like that or if you have a skill, you can think mm-hmm. about ways that you can kind of outsource your skill to other companies. Um, Yeah, there's definitely – there's a few different quick the, the possibilities are endless. I think I've the definitely- biggest thing – what I, I'm always, sometimes when I'm just like in the mood, I'll always like I'll Google like ten easy ways to make money online, you know. And it's always like online surveys, mm-hmm. um, 
what's it, some of the other ones like it's kind of it's some of the stuff that we've already listed but you can google just like ways to make money and it's like a <laughs> you guys have to be consistent with it though call a spade oh, a spade. True. you can't yeah. you can't you know, if you're looking to like, quote, if you're behind on something, you're behind on your bills or whatever the case may be, and you really, and I also think a lot of this is common knowledge, but I think sometimes people don't want to be negative. And I don't think we're being negative. I think we're being real. You got to be consistent. If you're behind on something, you know, you're going to probably have to pick up shifts if you just say you work a full time job and then you pick up shifts at night at like a bar or something or a waitress or a waiter. You're probably going to have to do that for six months to just get in a place where you feel okay. And yeah. Again, let's just normalize that everyone I think is in some type of position right now specifically where they're like, hey, I don't think anyone would turn down extra cash. But the unfortunately, the realistic situation with that is you have to put in the work and that time to get that extra cash. Because I got to be honest, no one's knocking on your door saying, here's an extra 500. I'll be back in two months with an additional 500. No one's saying that. No one. I'm saying that and so honestly long- $500 every two months in this nothing economy. <laughs> it's nothing what do you mean God. I li- it's insane like even just gas I'm like oh okay this it's know, crazy it's a disgusting amount but we're all we're all in that position and I think it's so 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 important to have these conversations about the difference right because every side hustle there's a different path depending on what you want to take and truly your mind is your biggest weapon and your determination is your biggest weapon so when you put those things together and are consistent with it for a long time you will reap the benefits I think it's just being patient yes if you're not a patient poly this isn't for you yep this isn't for you 100 percent. all right I'm gonna end us on a quote please do because I just think it's important yes Great minds have purposes. Others have wishes. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. (laughs) I love that. It's a good end for this one. It is a good end for this one because we're rooting for you guys. So we hope you have a great rest of your day. Also, because we love getting fan mail, if you guys are starting something or you have a small business or you're just thinking about something, message us or DM us because we love hearing these stories and we love – connecting with you guys like that we're just so interested and we love hearing people who are kicking major booty so if that's you slide in please please do anyways hope you guys have a great rest of your week great rest of your day we love you and we will talk to you next week bye bye